All right, guys, we got a major change of pace today. Make sure old blue's locked up there, but pull up to a small little local lake. This is actually probably a baby little local lake. Haven't fished here, it's been a few months, four, five, six months, something, four months probably since I've actually been down here. I don't know if I've ever fished here this time of year, you know, it being, you know, December now. I don't think I've ever fished here in December, not a single time. So I don't fish down here very much. It's not very far from the house at all. Just no real reason for me to drive over here, but it does have some really, really big ones. Like some of the biggest fish around me on some of the, on some of the lakes closest to me, there's some really, really big ones caught over here, but it can also be exceptionally tough. And unfortunately, as you can see behind me, the water's low, which, you know, kind of throws a wrench in what I wanted to do today, but oh well. We'll mix it up and grind for a little bit and see if we can catch one. So lots of spotted bass in here, some pretty nice spots, and then some really big large mouths. So let's go catch a couple. All right, so we're not even gonna do anything fancy today. We're just going to fish. I've got a swim jig, a untamed tackle apex. Got a OG Tiny 7, which is the new Tiny Deep. And then I've got a 3 8 ounce ace swim jig actually so between those things maybe we'll get a bite or two so what should we start with God, it'd be so fun to watch one eat the swim jig right here seems like a good time to me they want to come up out of that root ball just ooh. really feels like I need to be flipping but a man can dream that's all I'm gonna say about that you can dream the water being low kind of hurts this bite Obviously, you know, this bite's not very dominant around here anyways this time of year, but it being low definitely does not help. It's a lot less cover in the water. I still could see it happening though. This place actually fishes like a tidal fishery. So there's a dam right there. And when they generate from the lower dam, this place being so small and the lakes above it are way bigger that when they don't generate for a while, it gets low, like it drops, like it is right now, you know, four or five feet down. And then whenever it's obviously full, they start generating water. It comes all the way up, like over all that stuff, like fast in a matter of, you know, 30 or 45 minutes or an hour max it'll be all the way up in, in that stuff whenever they really turn it loose from that dam because it's so narrow and there's a lake above it small local lake above it that's not big but a lot bigger than here so i've actually got probably the worst tournament results of any lake around here on this exact lake but it's because I don't come down here and fish. I just show up for a tournament every once in a while. And I've had good ones down here, you know, just bad ones also. Lots of bad ones, actually. <laughs> to keep it, to keep a 50 fish straight. Oh, I lost him. I was a little spotted bass. I actually pulled him to the surface and seen him.
It's not the kind. Not the kind we're after. Yeah, there ain't much in the water right now. There's big giant laydowns and bank. That kind of bank. Which I have caught fish off that kind of bank. But I don't attempt to very often. I'm gonna go a little bit down this bank, but I'm not gonna go very far. I mean, it is just super shallow. I'm about to hit a little hit a tree. There's a tree right under me. I didn't even, never knew that one was there. I think the play is going to be. When it's low like this, fish for spots. That's probably gonna be the move. I'm gonna go a little ways further, but not too much. If y'all have watched my channel before, y'all know I really like skipping bushes. So I, every once in a while, you just make a cast up there and just kind of keep it honest, you know? I think um, the reason they're not gonna be up there, like everybody loves on a swim jig through grass, you know? There's a good isolated clump of grass up there. Y'all see that? That's where, that's where you expect big ones to come from, is isolated clumps like that. Now look at that clump gra of grass, just thick up there. You just gotta kinda keep all that stuff honest, you know? I don't know if this is the lowest I've ever seen. No, it's definitely not the lowest I've ever seen it, but it is pretty daggum low. I got an idea how we can go catch some. That's what we're about to do. But when you got a bait like a swim jig that you're super confident in, which obviously I am, love throwing this thing, you gotta throw it for a while just to get your feel and realize they're just not gonna bite it because the grass ain't got water within 10 feet of it. All right, made a little adjustment. Fish down all that wood. The water's just so clear. Obviously the way to do it would have been to flip that ace jig around that wood. But I'm addicted to the swim jig bite, wrongfully so. It burns me sometimes. God dog, when they bite it, is it fun? And you catch some really big ones. We're just gonna crank a little bluff or two. From what I know about this place, when I fish down here, this is a community spot. Without a doubt. 
and community spots get bass on them and they're really fun to hit when there's one boat in the lake because you get to hit them whenever you want to and as many times as you want to if i don't catch something down this bank might as well put it on the trailer i need to loosen my reel up a little bit This is the OG Tiny Deep. That's root beer chartreuse color. See, it's a OG Deep Tiny, seven foot diver. That root beer chartreuse, chartreuse is a really, really good clear water color, especially in the fall. Looks like a shad on top, got a little flash of orange. Whenever it's bouncing off the bottom, flashing a little bit. Really a fan of this color. Especially in the last few years, I've really started to throw this color a lot. This is a small little wood bait though, so the right setup is pretty important. Now we can throw it out there a little bit. Mm. That felt like it was wood actually is what that felt like. be a rock it just kind of mushed in there though Come on. Like that sucker. So these crankbaits are becoming available right now. I know people have probably been hearing about them for a while. The tiny has done extremely well. A lot of people, especially in my area, have been smashing them on the tiny for since it first came out a year ago or so. And this is a deep one. And the cool thing about this deep one, it's a flat side wood bait. So the buoyancy, because it's a smaller piece of wood, it's not super, super buoyant because it's a flat side. And it gets down to depth very, very fast. So you can throw it up there and get it down to the depth you want it pretty fast and then just slow the reel handle down and literally just kind of creep it across the bottom and just make it deflect the whole way. Which obviously you know is gonna catch them because Rapala is the one of the best wood bait manufacturers ever. And then you got Ot Defoe, who's a unbelievable bait designer, especially wood wood baits and that handcraft, that East Tennessee style. So you know that bait's gonna smash them. Flip over side that little stump. See we can't get a spotted bass to tote it off. Man, snaggy today crazy snaggy <clears throat> flip 
put it right in the crevice, I think. Uh oh, back it up some. Back up, Terry. Before I hit the stump. Every time you flip up to that isolated wood, you f just feel like it's about to, line's going to jump 10 feet in the air. Got a little bit of rain, a little bit of conditions. Should actually be good in this clear water. I love cranking. You just get so much feedback. You get on a bank with small rocks, you just feel them, you know? Dunk, 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 dunk. All across all the rocks. You get on big rocks, you can feel that. You feel it break free. It comes over a rock. I got that stuff just keeps you in tune with what your bait's doing, what it really does. Right now, I know what my bait's doing. I hung up on a dang piece of wood up inside the bit. Get up there a little bit deeper. There's a little outcropping right there. Big rock out there. I hooked something that's moving. I think I got fishing line or a trot line or something. Oh, old stick. It's a big rock. There ought to be one on that sucker. So I just said that the swim jig is not the deal. And then pick the swim jig up. Crazy. Craziness. Absolutely crazy. Stupid's what it is, probably. Look at that big old root ball right there. I'm gonna slow it down and pump it by that thing. Man, it feel like one could come from right there. It'd be hilarious if I call that freaking five pounder right there. Been swam this thing by so much good root balls and washes and stuff, no bites. Swim by a little bitty tiny lay down. That's what you want to happen. Lots of stumps and stuff out here. You can see some up there on the bank, which uh, obviously we need a foot more water on all that and it'd probably be pretty decent, but we don't have it. So I'm looking for the ones that are kind of out off the bank. We can get up there around those rocks up there and probably catch one. Super shallow right there. And just drops off in front of it. Boy, I could have seen it happening right there.
They actually got pretty good conditions for a moving bait. Seems like it shouldn't really be this hard. There's a stump off the bank right there. Damn, I was feeling that one too. That one felt right. See nothing up there? Just go right through that tree. Mm, there we go. God, I came off. Dang it. Man. That was a decent one. Daggum it. This is not a bait I lose many on. Kind of shocking. Hook looks good, everything looks good. Sharp. I mean, it wasn't a big fish, so I think like he had it down his throat, but I mean, it was a pound and a half or probably. But as you could tell, he really got me wrapped in some stuff at first. in a limb or something. See what he was doing though. He was underneath that lay down actually. Come on with it. That's a pretty piece of cover right there. There we go. That's a nice one too. He came and got that sucker, dude. I dare you to come off of there. Oh, oh man, he almost did. Dude, that fish feels, I would normally call that like a 220, but this fish feels heavy, really heavy. Let's see what he weighs. Like he feels super heavy. 265, 264, what was it? 266. I thought, man, that sucker felt dense. Dense bass. Nothing wrong with a dense bass. Density. I'm not saying this is the optimal technique for today, but yeah, dog, it felt optimal when that sucker was biting it. Just a super shallow stick of water right there. Didn't even make that great of a cast to it, honestly. But my word, did he get it. Got to get my old trusty life jacket to go past that sign on these boots. Let's see if we got one in here. We got one. Be shocked if I didn't have one in here because I'm pretty sure I have four in here. I really kind of disappointed that I haven't caught one cranking. Really, really odd. We got slightly more stain right here, too. Just because a little bit of moving water out of that 
damn, but it don't seem like it should. The lake above here is super clear. I don't know. God, that last bite was so awesome. Watched him come up there and just get it, dude. There's a reason why I love that bait. I can see my bait right there. I don't know what I'm stuck on. Guess I'm going across a rock shoal right now that I didn't know about. The water is lower than normal, so. Josh, there's a rock right there, big one. Swim an old jig though, down some rock. Down some rock. I don't know about y'all, but it looks like you catch one on a jig right here. To me. Let's turn the old cheater with the cheater on. Just get us a little look, see of what's out here so I don't hit no rocks. I got a good feeling about right here right now. Man, it's a lot shallower right here than I thought. I guess just looking at the bank, you think it's just dropped straight off super deep, but it does not. I've caught them better on the other side over there for sure though. But dang dude. Eight foot deep, probably don't need it set to 40. Some of my swim jig and frog fans probably disappointed mine was set to 40. Come on, let's get us a dang bite. First one to sniff this jig is gonna get his eyes crossed. I'm telling you right now. Now it's dropping off. Soon as it, as soon as I said, now it's dropping off. Caught one on the old ace. What is, fish is freezing. What are all those? God, please be six pounders. Please, for me. So a lot of the, guys who throw a jig a lot they know what that jig bite on these st steep banks is like it is a fun bite you just you kind of get in the zone it's funny because like sometimes i go down the bank throwing like a spinner bait or whatever and just kind of get going through the motions you know but when you flip up there and you're anticipating a bite you just you watch your line go down you know as soon as something is going differently right there and I always think about in the Bass Pro Shops you see them big giant large mouth and they're just nosed up to the bluffs that's what I always think about when I'm flipping bluffs and then 
I catch little spots. How does that make sense? It just drops off deep. Do I got something to throw to them? I do got a crappy jig in here. Oh, never mind. I got a Domeki right there. I think what I should have done is right in that little section where I got that bite. Y'all notice I had just said this is where it drops off and then I got that bite. I should have probably picked it apart, you know, flipped every foot and a half or two foot right through there. And if I was in a tournament right now, I would go back and do that. But half of the fun is putting the puzzle together. Hey guys so we've been out here for i don't know an hour probably now had five or six bites probably caught one really nice one one more i don't know pound and a halfer probably should have weighed him probably but just an old school grinder haven't caught any cranking which is kind of surprising to me because usually you smash them cranking this time of year seems like seems like you would but I haven't gave up on it yet definitely no we've caught three probably but anyways nothing like grinding with a couple with a few baits and just getting a bite every now and then so it's really fun actually for me my neck is hurting from looking down at live scope for the past while so I like getting out here and busting them on a jig for a change uh oh <clears throat> crazy how i got that one bite where it got where it dropped off and then nothing else there's some big dots out there i bet they're stripes It could be catfish. Let's throw it a couple. There is a shocking amount of fish under me. And I do not know what kind they are. I think they're crappy. So if I think they're crappy, I got a crappy bait. The battery died. But I was saying, I think there's a bunch of crappy under me. So I got a crappy bait out. Where's my bait? Pretty substantial wad of them right there. Caught one. Oh no, them stripes. Yeah, them stripes. Oh. I got it on the smallest hook. Oh. This is a really, really good crappy hook. This is a Gamakatsu round ball head with a super tiny hook on it. It's a really, really good hook for crappy. 
that fish was just a little too big for it. <laughs> I don't know. I'd like to see him though. Man. I'm about to find out if her stripes or not. This dude is a striper catching bait right here. If there ever was one. All right. That wasn't worth a crap. Did hook one. No good though. So I said if I was in a tournament, I would have flipped back down right over here. So that's what we were finna do. All right, we have successfully trolled a long way over a bunch of rocks. <clears throat> and with it being cloudy, they're kind of tough to see. I think we got out of there unscathed, luckily. saw a wake in there when I went in there. Probably a bluegill. Oh, there he is. Probably a 10 inch bass is what it actually was. biting over here a little bit at least had a very poor time executing but I didn't even throw back at that one that boiled on me and I missed him I know that wasn't no big one. I know that for sure If Miss Hunter was with me, she'd be like, put that swim jig down. Can't do it. Because they are at least biting it fairly decent, actually. Guess I better pick the old ace up for this little tree right here. Stuff looks a little, little too good. There we go. Busted that one. That hook, hook point. Right where you want it. That was the bite we've been waiting for. Reeled that slack up boy and it was like, Meow. I'm actually throwing a 3 8 ounce ace right now, dirty crawl. There's very little cover in the water what makes me lean towards the three eights you know if there's a ton of cover the water was high i'd want to go with a half just because you can filter through the low percentage places that much faster and get to where the fish are actually sitting because you don't really know it's 100 percent where the fish are likely positioned when the water is full with it being low like it is you know you get in these sweet spots and you kind of just soak it a little bit at least that's my approach. There are times though where that half 
actually generates more bites, you know. But today we're getting a fair amount of bites on the 3 8 so far. A little bit close to that stump. I'm about to drive right through a tree. Hmm, thought that was a bite. Go back to the OG Tiny Seven. See what kind of bites we can get on it. The water's just so clear that in my brain it's telling me to throw a jig instead of cranking. But if there's any crankbait they're gonna bite, it's this little one like this. Mm, there's one. God, it feels like a good one. What do I got? You got him hooked funny. Definitely had him hooked funny. A little, probably a 12 incher, I guess. Right off that little rock outcropping. When I get that bait down there, I just leave it. Which sometimes when it's clear like this, they want it to go a little faster. Oh man, I thought I had another one. Now we throw in that sucker. It's a light little bait, throw that far. Oh man, at the trolling motor. He got the front hook gone. Best he could do for that little sucker. Pretty little spot, but it is still a little spot. Something about this color in clear water, I'm telling y'all. Crazy. Crank down a nothing bank one time. It's not my normal deal. Man, come on.
Come on, boys. Come on, get it. Gosh, dude. I mean, it's little, but still. There's one. I just prop washed that going back to get my bait unhung. I don't know what I got. Large mouth. Oh, he ain't hooked very good. Oh my goodness. How is he still on there? There's a little piece of skin hanging off with my hook in it out of his eye. Gosh. I don't even know how I still got him hooked. Oh, that looks painful. Look at that. How is he even still hooked? I'm gonna try to do the best I can, buddy, to not hurt you. I think it's gonna be better to cut it. I don't really wanna hurt his eye. It's a decent one. He fell the side of the boat and I was like, hooked in top of the head. <clears throat> like, no, nah, he's hooked in a tiny piece of skin on his eye. That's wild. So that's interesting. You notice, caught two largemouth cranking and one spot cranking. Obviously, the spot was so little, he's probably never seen a dang bait in his life. But, even with that, both largemouth have been hooked outside the mouth. So that tells me that the conditions are not perfect for it. I mean, I know it's, it's, it's a bait they freaking bite. You know, like, I hear people say that you ain't got the right bait or whatever. Man, it's just not perfect conditions. You know, it's crystal clear. It's flat calm. There's no wind. That's probably the actual problem down here right now. But sometimes you just got to grind in clear water, you know? Shallow. Caught some dang big and cranking in clear water with no wind. It's not the perfect conditions for smashing them, but I've still got confidence doing it. A little disappointed in these couple little brush piles I've hit to not get a bite out of any of them. There we go. About filling the water. <laughs> we got him in the boat though. See how that one's hooked the way they're supposed to be hooked. A little apex on shallow wood. Apex, cleanup crawl. This is actually black and blue smoke colored. That is a fun way to catch one. Man, that's hard to beat. And they bite like that. My goodness. I'd like to see about at least a three pounder. Well, I guess I did catch him. I don't remember what he weighed. Was he 280? 260 definitely north of two and a half did catch that one on it 
but I want to see a big and come get it. It's a pretty place for a big one to be right there. That last fish was actually on the bank on those rocks. And I watched him kick off the bank and come eat it. Unreal. How much fun that is. Look up those rocks in. We have basically flipped, only crunked the boat up to switch back and forth size and fished all the way from the boat ramp, way down here. I don't think I've put it on pad yet today. And that's goofy. Threw up in the V of some dang wood. get close and drop them poles and bada bing That was a tiny one, had to be. I hardly never even felt him freaking pull back. But it was the same exact situation. I saw him kick off the bank and come get it. Dang beaver over there. Spooking my fish off. Water dropped and he ain't got nowhere to get right now probably. And I caught one off like the first piece of wood I threw to in here. And then just radio silence.
All right. That's enough. Pretty fun though. All right, got off the water. Got home right about dark and now it is officially dark. So taking stuff out of the boat, cleaning it up, not really cleaning it up, organize a little bit because fishing a little tournament in the morning with my little brother should be pretty fun. So pretty excited about that. But anyways, that was kind of just a fun little grinder type of a day. Didn't catch a ton of fish, probably caught 10, 11, nine, something like that, something around there. But you know, really fun to catch them on two or three baits I really, really like to throw. So caught a couple on an ace jig, five or six on the OG Slim 7 or OG Tiny 7 foot, OG Tiny Deep, whatever you want to call it. And then a couple on the Apex Swim Jig from Untamed Tackle. So that's a 5 16 black and blue smoke with a black and blue cleanup crawl. So super fun to just go lock in three baits and just go catch them on it. That's awesome. <laughs>